This is the Denon AVR2802 surround amplifier. The power amplifier itself seems to be working, but the control interface does not. If you set it up just right and then power cycle it, you can get sound through. Indicating that the power amplifier is indeed working. But if you now toggle anything and try to go back, it's dead silent again. And you have to power cycle it once more to get it to play again. So it seems like this is quite a common problem with this unit. And after doing some research, it seems that the failing component is the flash memory that contains the code for the DSP. And replacing that flash memory is quite tedious. First you have to get hold of a new flash memory. Then you have to get hold of a programming jig so that you can reprogram that flash memory. And then you have to get hold of the specific code for this unit. And then install the new memory. And even then you can't be completely sure that it's the flash memory that's failing. It could be the DSP chip for example. So I'm going to show you another way so that you can utilize the power amplifier part of this amplifier. All you need is a dual potentiometer. I'm using 20 kilo ohms but you can use 10 to 100. It doesn't matter that much. Preferably one with the same threading as this one. And some shielded cable. That's it. So what we're going to do is bypass the entire digital part of this amplifier. Here we have the block diagram of the audio signal. So the signal comes in here at the back of the unit. It then goes to this codec which converts the signal from analog to digital. It then goes to the DSP for signal processing and then it goes to the digital to analog converter and converts back into analog. Or for this part it converts it back to analog right away. And then it continues to this digitally controlled switching hub and then it continues to the power amplifier. So what we want to do is bypass this whole digital part. So we'll take the signal directly from the input and connect it straight to the power amplifier. So if we look closer here we can see we have a mute function, and then we have the power amplifier, and then we have a relay. So here we have two more things to do. We have to make sure that the mute function is not enabled, and we have to make sure that the relay is closed. Here we have the schematic for the power amplifier. As you can see there are several, there are six of them, here you can see three of them. So here we have the input connector for this power amplifier. And other than the signal, which we have here, we have the mute enable pin. So let's take a look at how this works. It goes to this transistor, so I'm guessing that when this turns on, the transistor turns on and it shorts the signal. So this is the signal node and we can see that it's biased through this resistor to the same potential as ground. So we'll have zero volts here and zero volts here. So for this transistor to be turned on and short the signal, there has to be a positive potential on this node. And we don't want that. So what we want to do is short this node to ground. In that case we will have zero volts here, zero volts here, and we will have zero volt at the base of this transistor. So there will be no current flow from the base to the emitter, and thus the transistor will not turn on and the signal will not be shorted. But before we short this pin, we need to make sure we're not causing any damage to the rest of the circuit if we do that. So here we have the connector for the mute toggling, and it goes to this part here. So it's toggled with these transistors, and it seems to be using 5.8 volts. So what happens if we try to pull this node to ground while it is on, is that we're pulling around 5.8 volts through a 1k ohm resistor. And that should cause around 30 milliwatts of power to be dissipated in this resistor, which should not cause any damage. So it should be okay to short this to ground. Okay, now let's take a look at the relay toggling. So here we have the relays, and the relay coil is marked with this resistor-like symbol. So when we're pulling current through this coil, the relay closes, and that's what we want. So here on this top node we have 12 volts, and then here we have the toggling nodes. So in order to pull current through the relay coil, we want to ground this node so that we have a 12 volt voltage drop across it. So now again, we have to make sure we're not damaging anything by shorting this node to ground. So here we have the toggling for the relays. So let's take a look at this toggling transistor for example. So if this node is high, there will be a potential difference between the base and the emitter. So they will flow current here, turning on the transistor. And in that case, they will flow current here too causing this node to be grounded to what's called relay ground. So in that case we're pulling current through the relay coil and the relay is turned on. 
if this node is low, there will be no potential differences between the base and the emitter, so there will flow no current through it, and it will be turned off. So this will act as an open circuit. And then we will not pull any current through the relay coil. So what we want to do is to short this node, and that shouldn't be a problem, as we're just shorting the collector and emitter together. That will not cause any excessive current to flow through the transistor. So over here we have the audio input, it then goes to the codec and DSP which is located on this PCB, then continues to the control interface which is on the face of the unit, goes to this connector board and it continues down to the power amplifier which you can see here. So here you have all six power amplifiers lined up, here we have the heatsink for the output transistors. So we're going to get the signal from here and route it to the power amplifier through this potentiometer. And the reason for the potentiometer is to be able to control the volume. Okay, let's start by taking it apart. I plan to use these input connectors, they're labeled external input. Okay, so now we'll remove this board and this board. So to remove these white connectors you can just slide a small flathead screwdriver in, down in the middle of it and then bend slightly as you pull it up. Now you can access this little PCB that the control knob is attached to. Now unfortunately this little PCB is soldered to this PCB with four wires, so we have to desolder it to remove it. Here we have the connector board, here we have the connector for the relay and it's these two pins that we want to ground. And I think it's easiest to do up here, so we'll just connect these two points to ground. Then we have the input connector for the left channel and the right channel. And here it's the outermost pins we want to connect together to disable the mute function. And we'll connect the signal to this pin.
So here's the input connectors we're going to use. So we're going to take the signal here. Now the input from the connector and the input to the amplifier will be connected through this potentiometer to be able to adjust the volume. So this is the way we're going to connect it. So this is a dual potentiometer, so it has two potentiometers built into one, but only one shaft to control them both. So we're going to use one for the left channel and one for the right channel, and we're going to use simple voltage division to control the gain. So we're going to have the input at the top of the potentiometers here, and then we're going to extract the signal from this tab. Okay, time to reassemble it. Okay, I think we're ready to test it before we put it all back together. 